What's up everybody, it's Blaze from Funbox here, and we are almost finished with this section of sending damage back and forth between units, which is really good. In fact, in the last video, we just wrote two lines of code because all of our foundational stuff was already done. So in this video, what we're going to do to round off this section is we are going to play this animation right here, which is the miss animation. And it's fairly simple. We're not going to be writing that much code, but I just want to tell you guys now that there are two ways to approach it, right? So the first way is if I go into my scripts, into my helper, is we can write our code either, actually there's three if you think about it. We can write our code here in the check for hit, or we can go into the unit attack and write our code down here, right? So instead of if basically, in the case where we miss our attack, so unit attack will hit is false, then basically we're going to control our unit's animation system and we're going to tell it to run the um, miss state. For us, however, what we're going to do is we're going to keep it centered around the unit itself. The main reason being because it doesn't really do anything, it doesn't run any extra code or play any other uh, sequences at this point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to control it here in the attack phase. But before we get into that, let's set up our broadcasts first, because we're only going to need one extra one. In our case, like I said, we're going to create the player miss event here, which like I said in the previous videos, we're going to take it maybe a couple of frames before the end. Um, Let's see what this one looks like. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it from the frame right before the animation itself finishes. We're going to add in a broadcast here. I'm just going to call mine unit miss just to keep uh, the, the broadcast uniform. Uh, if for those who are curious, um, just like I thought, there will be post post release support for a very recent PC port that came out and it did come out in time. It's on the it's on the Epic Game Store at the moment for those of you who are curious. If you don't have the uh, game store, that's totally fine because there's also remasters of it on PlayStation as well. So there you go. You guys can have fun with that game. If you guys know which game I'm talking about, let me know in the comments section below. Because I am uh, I'm curious to see how many of you guys are uh, keeping up with what's happening in the industry as a whole. Because uh, it does help even if you are a small dev. Uh, anyway, moving on, let's keep going. What we have here is the unit miss and keep in mind the spelling. What we're now going to do is here back in the parent unit in the attack phase, we're going to add in a check here. We're going to check here first to see if the attack will hit. Attack will hit. And we are going to enclose these next two lines into these braces here, All right? And then I'm going to copy it as much as I don't like to do that because I just want to, I want to keep these videos short because I am still on long-term support. And so technically I am working at the moment, uh, but don't tell anybody that I'm making this video for you guys. Anyway, let's keep going. So we're going to check, we're only going to run this code if the attack will hit. And so naturally, if it doesn't, we need to run another separate um, function. And for this, we're just going to write else, of course. And then in between, we're going to paste this, but instead of idle, we're going to naturally go into the miss state, which is down here. And instead of idle start, we need to go into miss start. And that's done. That's done for our player unit. If we play the game now, nothing's going to happen because we haven't actually done anything. So we need to make a couple of changes in the manager itself. One thing that I forgot to mention right at the start, just because I'm trying to rush through this, is I actually added in a couple of extra lines. So the process finished, we're going to debug the process finished as well as if the selected unit has also finished their turn. You don't have to add that in. That's why I kind of left that out of the ex explanation, 
but for those that are curious, I added that in just so that I can keep up with whatever I'm doing. Anyway, let's keep going. We're gonna try and keep this short, like I said. What we're going to do is we're, we are going to read this unit miss. I'm gonna show you guys something that should be helpful when it comes to writing up switch statements. And that is basically, if you want two cases, two different cases to act similarly to one another, you don't have to have the break after each case. So let me show you what I mean by typing this out first and unit miss. And you can see here that I haven't put in any um, break here. I'm not writing break down here, but what I will do is I will show a debug message and I will call it unit missed. Now this is going to do something funny. I have a feeling it'll do something funny, but maybe not. Oops, that shouldn't be, uh, should be semicolon. Um, it doesn't look like it will break, but I have a feeling that this will cause some problems. But uh, let's see what happens when we do play the game. All right, so if we're going to miss our attack, we can see here that our uh, unit has basically, well, they've missed. And it says here in the uh, debug, oops, it says here in the debug that uh, the unit has missed. And it went through the whole loop, as you guys saw. So basically what's happening is it's running this code, but it's also finishing the process. It's also marking process finished as true, which is exactly what we wanted, which is good. All right, let's close that out. And so um, just, just as a side note, what you can see is with this, by not using the break statements, you can actually stack a whole bunch of different cases on top of each other that can essentially run code on top of code on top of code. And what it'll do is depending on which cases have what code and in which order, it's going to run every single line of that code until it finds the break, okay? So technically speaking, I can just write something like this. If I can copy that and paste it here, it'll do the same thing as basically running these two. But just to show you guys what you can do with code, is you can basically do this, right? We don't even need to have this debug message even. And what these two lines will do is it'll both run this process finished and set it to true. That's basically what it'll do, all right? So just keep that in mind. Um, one last thing is we are going to comment these three lines of code out because we don't need it. Let's see what happens when we try playing the game now. And hopefully, for the purpose of demonstration, we can see that uh, when we miss, right, the process finished, it gets run, selected finished, it gets run and set to false, and then we do a perfect loop. We are basically done with this section. That's how quick it was. We took some time, some extra time in the past videos, but it really set us up to finish this section off really, really quickly. All right, that's done. We're finished with this section. Attacking and taking damage, done. A couple of tweaks that you might want to do, if you guys are interested, is down here for incoming damage, right? You can tweak that. You can put in some extra stuff here, maybe um, some multipliers or something. If you want to do that, that's totally fine. You can do that. But you can also expand on that by going here in the damage unit. You can also expand here as well, right? So basically you can put some multipliers here for defense and you can tweak that as much as you want. It's totally up to you. Another thing that you can do also is if you don't want to use um, random, uh, sorry, integers, so whole numbers, if you want to use decimals, that's totally fine. You can do that. and it won't have any effect in the overall um, code. It'll just look different um, what you're going to be writing versus what I'm going to be writing. All right, so it's really minor, but it's something that you, I encourage you guys to try out for yourselves. All right, so with that, the next section we will be working with UI stuff and making things look pretty. 
and also by dividing our teams up. So we're not going to be basically looking at these same characters over and over again. We are going to add in some new characters. Um, from that sprite sheet that I shared with you guys right at the start of the series, I figured uh, we could use that uh, as well. So that's it for this section. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Oh, before I leave, I just want to get your guys' opinions. I'm thinking of starting up a Discord server for everybody here. Uh, it's just somewhere that everybody can join together, talk about stuff, talk about games dev, talk about gaming in general. And also, I'm also going to start taking, maybe, I'll start taking suggestions in the Discord as well. So let me know if you guys are interested, if you guys would like to join a Discord server, or if it's worth it even. Just let me know in the comments section below. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. I promise this is the actual end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.